It's kind of maybe always something I've wanted to do. That sort of artisan lifestyle. <laughs> it's sloppy. And I guess I just like to play with mud a little bit. It's cool to think that the, you know, I start off with this lump of mud essentially and, and I carve it into this beautiful thing and I think that that's also what's enchanting to people. And then the further you get in the throwing process, the more you have to slow down the wheel. So it starts off fast and you slow it down. It's almost like I lose all thought when it's happening and it's just this, this sensation, this feeling. You gotta kind of push the envelope a little bit too. And if it fails, not meant to be. <laughs> okay, I would say my favorite step is the throwing of the clay. The more I stretch it out, the thinner the walls are going to get. And my favorite thing to make are bowls. I just love that perfect curve that you can make and just knowing how good that bowl is going to be for, for whatever purpose it is, if it's for beating eggs or if it's making cookies or letting dough rise or eating soup out of. You could like push it too far and it'll flop over, so it's just got to have this just perfectly wide opening. Cleaning up the foot here. Put my little Van Gogh on there. Voila. I just thought, well, I'm signing my name on the bottom of everyone, so make it simple. No one else has MEZ pottery. <laughs>So when I was 11, my family, my whole family, we moved from Florida to Alaska. We drove in a cargo van and um, with an Airstream attached. And we brought a wheel and bought a kiln on the way. And then my dad set it up in the garage and showed me how to play on it. And when you start that young, when you start learning so young, it just gives you that much more of an advantage and time into it, you know? I mean, if I were to start right now, I mean, I wouldn't have that 20 odd years of of mistakes <laughs> and learning and repetition that's really helped me. Let's see here, nice, perfect. Oh man, it's so nice to have a space that I can look out and just be peaceful. I mean, it also maybe adds to the organicness of, of my work too, you know, being influenced by all the nature and stuff and being breathing that fresh air, evoking that feeling that the mountains give you. I think nature influences me a lot, but also the idea of form following function. This technique is called scraffito. It's always nice to have a cup that just fits your hand. I mean, it's just, it's just like, ah, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> well, I sell my work mainly at markets, so like directly, which is how I prefer because then people can connect with me. Maybe we'll see you around in Palmer. It feels really good for people to say, I bought your stuff. It's my favorite piece, I use it every day. I mean, that feels so good. I think Alaskans are really generous with supporting artists and love um, the eclecticness that comes with, you know, the Alaskan art, because we are an eclectic group of people here. 41, but you go 41, I got a 40 out a bit down here now. Yeah, there's something special. I mean, I'm building my, my name and my company here because I have been supported for all these years by people who come to the markets, and I think it's pretty unique. Thank you.